locked in on a pack to O'Connell Center. It is the SEC on ESPN. And our Super Tuesday presented by KFC, all part of conference tip-off. And what a matchup. The number two team in the country, the Kentucky Wildcats against the Gators of Florida. As you take a look at the star watch, John Wall, a freshman, the only person in the country averaging over 17.7 assists and shooting 50% from the floor. On the other side, Kenny Boynton leads Florida right now, and he's coming off a career-high game. He had 28 in a loss to Vanderbilt over the weekend. Welcome to the O-Dome, everybody. It's already rowdy behind us. Brad Nessler along with Dick Vitale. We've been waiting for this one, partner. Florida is not used to losing at home. They don't want to start 0-2 in the conference and Kentucky's on the best roll they've been on in 44 years. Well, you know, Brad, you mentioned the 0-2 start. Billy Donovan's never had an 0-2 start in the SEC. And tonight, they get an opportunity to play the number two team in America. But let me remind all the Gator fans, they also played the number two team in America by the name of Michigan State earlier this year and came out with a big W, and that was in New Jersey. Well, tonight, they're going to meet a combination, when you talk inside, outside, I think as good as there is in America. Patterson on the interior is a dominator and then on the perimeter John Wall it doesn't get any better my friends he's been absolutely superb he's been fantastic especially at crunch time we'll see if Florida has got an answer tonight not only is it a basketball city, but it's also a football city. And there's a lot of buzz in here, Aaron Andrews. Wow, is there ever. Just 20 minutes ago, this rowdy reptile crowd went from taunting the Kentucky players to getting on their phones, checking the internet, even asking us, is the news true that Lane Kiffin went from Tennessee to USC? Well. I tried to get comments from Florida's athletic director and even the football staff. No one is commenting on the breaking news right now. But one thing is true. This Rowdy Reptiles crowd will wake up, and that's what Kentucky head coach John Calipari has warned his team. Communication is key, and if you have the Gators down, keep them down for 40 minutes. Hey, Brad, I guess Lane Kiffin is not going to be coming back with Bruce Pearl <laughs> when Tennessee comes to town to watch the balls beat the Gators. I, I, that's not going to happen now. That's, that's over, Ian. Yeah, that's over. Let's take a look at John Calipari. Kentucky Wildcats and a starting lineup. Miller, Bledsoe, and Wall in the backcourt. Up front, DeMarcus Cousins, 6'11", and Patrick Patterson. And Dick already talked about how effective he is, a first-team All-SEC performer. For Billy Donovan's troops, Irving Walker and Kenny Boynton in the backcourt. They had 50 points between them and the loss to Vandy the other day. Werner, Tyus, and Vernon Macklin are up front. Florida 11 and 4, Kentucky 16 and 0. The officials tonight: Tom Eads, Mike Stewart, Tony Green's going to throw it. Here we go. You know, it's amazing. They lost that game to Vanderbilt, and they made 13 threes, and that's been really their Achilles heel. They're zoning right now. They're saying, Kentucky, we're going to make you shoot the perimeter shot. Bledsoe feeds inside, gets it right back, gave up a three, scoops it in close, and Cousins missed. Tyus will clear the rebound. Nice inside opportunity to convert. Warner, the captain, the veteran on the outside. Got nothing from their interior game against Vanderbilt. That's what really hurt them. And tonight, with certainly Patterson and Cousins, that could be a dilemma. If they let A.J. Ogilvy eat them up, you kind of wonder what Cousins and Patterson can do. But there's a good start for Vernon Macklin, who fouled out the other day. He's already got as many points as he had on Saturday. Yeah, he really was gone with like six minutes left in the game. Was not a fact the transfer. Marco Polo guy from out of Georgetown. Here's Wall trying to feed the post, and Patterson lost it out of bounds. Kentucky turnover. Now John Calabari talks about we're 9-7, and seven, not 16-0. and oh. You heard me tell him the locker room before the game. I don't want to hear about that 9-7. and seven. You want to give up those wins? Give me a break. They're 16-0, and zip, baby. But that's the motivator. You call that baloney or something to that effect. <laughs> <laughs> what about his first goal tonight on the backboard? On the blackboard, he said, brothers keepers, baby. That's right. We better and take care of it. So each team's turned it over once. This is one of those tough places to play. The crowd is right on top of you. You usually have great players to combine with good coaching, great fan support. That's why he said, have your teammates back tonight. Here's a kick out. Walls wide open for three. Clanged it off the back of the iron, and Walker's got a man in front in Boynton. Boynton lays it in. 
Morton, very explosive player, made six threes in that Vanderbilt game. Here comes the full court pressure. This Should is the kind of start Billy Donovan wanted. Yeah, get the crowd really involved in the game early. Bledsoe draws a double team. Cousins into Patterson. Nice speed from the big to a big, but Patterson missed in close. It missed two in close. Cousins and Patterson. Irving Walker, the little guy, the 5'8 sophomore out of Brooklyn, slows things down with a 4-0 Gator lead. He'll pull up, long range, in and out. And a whistle and a foul underneath. Think it's going to be on Macklin, and it is. Only two unbeaten teams in college basketball, as you said earlier. Texas, right here, Kentucky. I don't think we'll see, I know my lifetime, a team go unblemished like Bob Knight's team did. I think the three-point shot, Brad, has revolutionized the game. Right. It makes it so difficult to be able to run the table. As good as Kentucky is, the SEC is much improved, and it would be almost unbelievable if they were able to do it during the regular season. They're so young. I think what's really amazing with John, John Calipari's done is with young kids learning a new system. Miller missed a three. Cousins trying to keep it alive, out of bounds, off Cousins, Florida ball. Miller starting to miss some playing time. He started last game, only played 15 minutes. John Calabria not happy with the way he's playing. I think we're going to see the kid Liggins a little bit tonight. DeAndre Liggins, a sophomore out of Chicago. Kentucky, first five trips, a turnover, and 0 for 4 from the floor. Wall trying to come up with a steal on Boynton, and Boynton ran it down. You know, one thing about Wall, he can go spurts, 10 minutes, not do a thing, and then all of a sudden, bang, like he did in the Louisville game in the second half. Got unbelievable speed. That time, Boynton stayed with him, stride for stride, trying to get that loose ball. He's Knocked out of bounds by Bledsoe. Almost as quick as you. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> So almost three and a half minutes in, the Gators 4 nothing. Eric Murphy in the Florida lineup. Four on the shot clock. Tyus has got to go up with it and knocks down a three. That's his first three of the year. Joe Kelly not happy with their defensive effort. He's going to be making some changes. All out of bounds to Kentucky. What a start, though, for Florida. Murphy's father played for Gary Williams at Boston College. Jay Murphy, left-handed player, played the NBA for four years. I'm going to take a look right there. Big three. Here's Miller in traffic. Rebound. Battle. Won by who? Going to be Florida ball. <laughs> Gators bring a lot of passion, emotion. This crowd certainly giving them that lift. Then the early lead at home against a team that comes in number two in America, I think is really vital. No doubt. And a 7 0 run to open for Florida. Nick, that wasn't Alex Tyus. Tyus's first three pointer of the year. It was the first three pointer of his career. That's the run out by Bledsoe. Bledsoe really up and down the floor really quick. He's another diaper dandy. Doesn't get a lot of publicity because of the presence of Wall. Isn't that amazing to be that good and you're overlooked to a certain degree? Well, same with Cousins. Cousins one of the better diaper dandies in America. Got to control his emotions, though. Boynton way out, off balance. Not a good shot. Murphy keeps it alive, but he walked with it. In their only other road game, Kentucky was down 12 early in the game against Indiana. So it's all Florida early as they run up the floor and lead 7 to 2. Back in Gainesville, where Florida's jumped out to a 7 to 2 lead. Kentucky missed its first six shots of the ball game before finally getting a basket right before that timeout. You know, Florida really started on fire. They were eating zip, then they lose three in a row. And those losses, some of them bad losses, lost at home to South Alabama. Right. Why the Arrows Club beats them. They lose to Richmond on neutral. Lose to a very good Syracuse team who's been outstanding with Jim Beheim 
exceeding expectations. That SEC opener, though, the first time they've lost since 2001 at South Carolina to open the conference play. To a good Vanderbilt team, Kevin Stolling's club, Ogilvy had a big game, 24. Speaking of 24, Bledsoe might have gotten away with a walk, but the next guy didn't, Orton. So Kentucky turns it over. ACC doubleheader. ESPN's Wednesday night hoops tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Boston College takes on the Duke Blue Devils. And Cameron then at 9, North Carolina looks to continue their dominance over the Clemson Tigers. Wednesday night hoops part of conference tip-off on ESPN. One of my favorite players, Ed Davis down in North Carolina. South is absolutely sensational. A big game against Virginia Tech. Duke got stunned by Absolutely. Georgia Tech Saturday in Atlanta. Yeah, you did that game. Great game for Lawal. That's terrific game. Yeah, he did. 21 points, 9 rebounds for Gani Lawal. Just took over the second half. Here at 7-2, Gators try to pull a stunner over one of the two remaining unbeatens. Long ways to go here just in the first half. Chandler Parsons in the lineup. Werner on the baseline. And... Offensive foul. Tell you one thing, the intensity, emotion of John Calipari is always reflected by his players. It's amazing. He has won 43 in a row now. Regular season games. The last regular season game he lost while at Memphis to Syracuse. I did that game, and that was his last game back in December 2008. He's won 62 conference games in a row. You go to Memphis and now to Kentucky where they're 16 and 0. I mean, that's. Friend. Unheard of. As that's own two three. The numbers show that Kentucky can shoot the ball, but a lot of people question whether they're really that good of a perimeter shooting team. They turn it over again. They got three times as many turnovers as baskets right now. They're gonna get everybody's best hit, man. Everywhere yeah. they go. John Calipari's gonna bring that out, and that Kentucky uniform's gonna bring it out. Here's Walker, nice kick out, one long three. <laughs> He shot that from Sarasota, Florida, man. <laughs> Look at that quickness. Are you serious? Are you serious? Hey, you want a great story? Get out and read Grant Wall's story. He was the cover of Sports Illustrated. What a terrific story. I learned a lot about the kid I didn't know. His dad died at age nine. Yeah, his mom, Francis, is here tonight. As a matter of fact, Walker. And now kept alive by Florida momentarily, but then swiped away by Bledsoe. Something about speed, Brad. He can't teach that incredible quickness he has. Wall for three. Too far. Too strong. But Orton had an easy one inside. That's the third time Kentucky's missed a shot two feet away from the basket. You're right, Paul. That's three opportunities. Big people had up chances to score. Warner, he can shoot it, but he's missed from both wings now. Back comes Kentucky. Bledsoe, a little shake and bake. Walker held his ground. Hey, one thing, Florida struggling shooting threes all year. Take a look at his speed right now, man. I mean, he's like a halfback. Look at this guy explode to the goal. He made a move in the Connecticut game at a crunch time. I still sit amazed. I don't know how he scored in traffic the way he took it to the goal. There's his numbers, as we mentioned, with over 50%. Seven assists, which are second in the country, and over 17 points. That's the only guy that can boast all three of those categories that strongly. Warner, I was going to say he might be afraid to shoot, but this time he drives and he draws a foul off Cousins. You know, Florida, the last two years, little criticism because they didn't get to the big dance. They won 49 games. Yeah. Usually that would be good enough to get in, except they lost at the wrong time. At the end of the year, they collapsed. They were 25 and 11 last year, 9 and 7 in the conference, which was third in the East. As Dick said, the timeliness of those losses is what kept them out of the NCAA and in the NIT. You know, nobody's really lost more players than Billy Donovan in the way to the NBA over the last few years. I know Carolina's lost a lot, but you think about the players they have lost. It's been amazing. Then he loses Kalaitis, who goes Kalaitis to Kalaitis goes Greece. to Greece, yeah. yeah. I mean, that Spates, one was the shocker. Yeah, Spates really hurt him, too. He thought Spates was going to come back. It would have been a major factor, obviously. But he went to the NBA, got a lot of cash, and was doing a good job. Spates went early, and then Calathus was considering the NBA, and all of a sudden he signs a contract in May to, to play in Greece. I don't know if Nick's watching the game tonight in Greece. I don't know what time it is in Greece, but it's 9-4 Florida. Changing defenses, not a man. 
Multiple defenses used by Donovan. Cousins in good position on the low block, but again, Macklin defends him pretty well, and he missed the hook shot. He's had eight double-doubles this year, Cousins. Here's Macklin offensively on the other end. He tries to scoop it down to Tyus, and Patterson steals it. You know, went to Georgetown with a big-time reputation. Cousins missed another one with the left hand. And he's frustrated right now. Yeah, he's a little frustrated. He's got to control himself emotionally because he could have been as Urban Myers in the house right now. Lane Kiffin said, I had enough for Urban. I'm going out to Southern Cal, baby. I think Urban's checking uh, text messages right now and smiling. <laughs> Maybe he's getting one from Lane Kiffin. His wife's there, too. They're both checking it. Mike Slive's a guy that's smiling tonight, commissioner of the conference. Urban and Shelley checking their phones. Where's Timmy T? I want to get an autograph for Timmy T. <laughs> Come on, you know him. You figure you introduced me to him. He asked Urban for a comment about Lane Kiffin's departure, and he declined. Timeout taken by Florida. And if Aaron Andrews can't get a comment out of him, nobody's going to get a comment out of him tonight. He wants to watch basketball. He's just here to see some hoops. Little hoops. Saturday at noon, we got more hoops on ESPN. You can see two of the top scorers in the Big East. Wesley Johnson and Deshaun Butler face off. It's Syracuse and the Mountaineers. And then at 2 o'clock, Georgia Tech and North Carolina get together. As the Yellow Jackets coming off that win over Duke, and they do it to North Carolina as well. Men's College Basketball presented by Five Hour Energy is part of conference tip-off on ESPN on Saturday. That's what we were talking about for John Calipari. Second most in NCAA history to the guy that uh, started all the... All the Wildcat blue, Adolph Rupp. Kentucky, only 43 SEC titles, only 25 SEC tournament championships, including 10 of the last 18, and off to their best start since the 65-66 season. That team started 23-0. This team is 16-0, but right now they're down five. That 66 team lost their first game, Tennessee. Tennessee doesn't last time they beat a number one team until they beat Kansas the other day. What a win for Bruce Pearl wow. and an undermanned Tennessee team. They beat Bill Self's number one Jayhawks. Here's a bump. Nope. Yes, it is going to be on Perry Stevenson. Well, we're seeing some great freshman players on the floor here. You talk about some that John Calipari's had. He's had a couple of sensational guards. Dick will compare them with the guy he has right now when we come back. Back at the O-Dome, freshman guard comparisons under John Calipari, and he's had these guys, these three guys, just over the course of the last three or four years. And, Dick, when you look at what those guys have already done, gone on to be rookies of the year in the NBA, how do you compare the games they have compared to John Wall? Well, you know, it's like arguing when I was a kid, Brad. You were too young then. But <laughs> when I was a kid, we used to argue about Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, yep. Duke Snyder, all Hall of Famers. I mean, these kids are all super that we're talking about. But I would give the slight edge, and I mean the slight, to John Wall because of his superb quickness and his leaping ability. 6'4", and he leaps like you can't believe, 43-inch right. vertical jump. And I really love his ability to get to the basketball. Hey, that's certainly not saying that you don't like Derrick Rose or you don't like Tyreek Evans. Both are sensational players. And John Calipari in the locker, you said, come on, give, yeah. us, give us one. He said, no. He looked at me and said, no way. No way. No way. <laughs> He's not dissing anybody over somebody else. That's for sure. I tried to get him to give us one. He wouldn't give it. He wouldn't give it up. I should have said off the record. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, the greatest, that's the greatest book I could ever write. <laughs> off the record over 30 years with Coach just a told me off the record. That would be a major volume. There'd be a lot of pages. Here's Evans. Uh, Tyus Reddick on the outside. And back comes John Wall trying to feed it to Patterson. He somehow snuck that pass through there. What a terrific pass. Very routine. Typical little bounce pass in transition. So Kentucky picked up its intensity on both ends. See, watch this pass now. He's got great vision. Throws the bounce pass. Leads him perfectly. I think the one thing that Calipari has done throughout his tenure as a coach at Massachusetts and Memphis and now at Kentucky, he really gets kids to buy in to play with emotion defensively. And when you combine that with talent, let's face it, Brad, he's going to have a level of talent that he's never, ever had at those other schools because of what Kentucky could offer. Even as good as Memphis was those two years. Let's check in with Aaron. 
we had a chance to talk to John Calipari just about some of the great players like Derrick Rose, who actually John Wall says he looks up to very, very much. And just where does John Wall compare to some of the guys, the greats that he's had so far? And, you know, he said one of the things is everybody questioned how well they could shoot. And obviously John Wall has, you know, proved the critics wrong. But also he does believe, like Dickie D's talked about, that quick burst. was a burst by Vernon Macklin. Macklin got the play, but what a play was made in terms of the bounce pass to get him that opportunity. Is that zone? Are they really going to try to match up on the zone? Not let him get in those gaps? Bledsoe knocks down a three. He can shoot, and he's one street tough kid as well. He's a winner. He's a competitor. I think the one thing that he had said, Calipari Juas, he was so impressed, never knew that John Wall and Bledsoe were such competitors. Whistle and a foul. Tyus goes to the basket. What a great pass by Parsons. Terrific look inside, off the bounce. Lays it down. Macklin gets the jam. Alex Tyus is going to go to the free throw line. He's been hot in the last six games, 15 points, seven and a half rebound average per ball game. You saw him hit that three earlier. He's the top returning scorer and rebounder on this team. And and there was a time when yeah. they thought they were going to lose him to the Absolutely. NBA. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, what about the most dramatic shot, spectacular shot in the history of Florida? Parsons. Parsons against <laughs> NC State. Wow. Not the most significant. Pat Dooley wrote about it in a fine columnist. Most significant, Mike Miller when he beat Butler and Corey Brewer when he beat Georgetown in the regionals. He knocked down a 70-footer in overtime. That's pretty big. Spectacular. That was a good-looking shot by Donnell Dodson. He's capable of shooting threes. Dodson they recruited for the ability to shoot a three, but he's been up and down, just like my stocks. Up, up down. down. That's his 22nd three-pointer of the year. A one-point game now as Kentucky was down 7 to nothing at the beginning of the game, and now almost the midway point of the first half, they battle back to be down by one and a chance to lead on this trip. Wall trying to find the handle. Letzel gave up a three from the elbow. He missed it. And a collision underneath. Between Werner and Cousins. I tell you, that was just toughness right there by Cousins. He said, get out of my way, the big white body. He said, get out of my way. Hey, another thing that really impresses me about Wall, a lot of young kids, man, have a tendency to be selfish. He is so unselfish as you're watching this offensive rebound. He's always looking to find the open guy. They actually called that foul on Macklin on a little swipe foul. It was Werner who hit the deck, and they didn't call it on him, so Cousins goes to the free throw line. Kentucky on an 8-2 run. They were down a touchdown. They were. Down a touchdown. Yeah, the one thing I said earlier about John Calipari now in Kentucky going to get great players, they have so much to offer. Fan support, great facility. Their practice facility is unbelievable. It's like a Taj Mahal. A quick foul on the other end. Right at the midway point of the first half. I think the state of Kentucky is very lucky to have two coaches of the stature of Petito and Calipari. Two of the best. Walker off balance shot, but he knocked it down to tie things up for the first time tonight. New York City player made five threes in that game against... Vanderbilt, yet they lost 11 threes between he and Boynton. Dodson trying to go to the rack, had it knocked out of bounds. It'll still be Kentucky ball. Syracuse really put the hurt when they played. Well, you did the game. Yeah. Played the game against Florida. Florida hung with them for a while, but then Syracuse, Wesley Johnson, the most impact of any Marco Polo transfer player in America. He was great that night. He's a terrific athlete. Wall has a look at his head coach behind him. Now they work it around the perimeter, and Dodson takes the outside jumper. Tips. Cousins, he's got a lid on that basket when he's in close. Florida coming back the other way. Nice Great look, though, by Mr. Walker, New York City star. Wall and Cousins, the two freshmen, come the other way. And Tyus with a block. Outlet, Shipman on the run. Got it. Shipman, a good athlete. They're rocking and rolling here. The Rowdy Raptors. Oh, they're jumping with joy.
First it was Walker. Take a look at that pass, man. He put it on a dive, man. He put a dive. There he is. He dropped it. Oh, what a great look. And then after the miss underneath on a breakout, it was Shipman going the other way. Shipman, an explosive athlete. Billy Donovan has proven here at Florida football school that you can have both, just like Rick Barnes, the amazing job he's done in Texas, where he certainly have proven you can have both. I think what great thing that Billy has done, Rick has done, they've utilized football as a positive in a way of recruiting, right. really taking that weekend and making it special. Well, Texas, the only other unbeaten plays at Iowa State tomorrow night. And Rick Barnes, Texas Longhorns, number one in college basketball for the first time in the history of that school. Out of against North Carolina, I was impressed. I'll tell you, the kid Pittman's gotten better. I bet you were impressed with the facility you were in, too, weren't you? Oh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> 1.2 bills. <laughs> oh, oh. Nine minutes remaining, first half. Gators by two. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews at the O'Connell Center in Gainesville, where the Gators are 7 and 1 so far this year. Trying to pick off their second number two team. As Dick mentioned, they beat Michigan State back in November when they were ranked number two. Tyus rimmed one out. Rebound. Off to Orton. Here comes Wall in a hurry. Pull up, 18-footer. Got it. So that's what I think really separates him a little bit with Evans and with Rose. I think this kid's a little better from the perimeter. Second tie of the game at 19. See, I think the pace of the game should really excite Wall because Florida's not playing any gimmicks. They're going up and down with him. Tyus, again, the outside jumper. Maybe the worst thing that could have happened was him hitting that three-pointer earlier. He's missed his other outside jumpers. Wall trying to give Kentucky the lead, and he scored three straight now. I'll tell you one thing about him. He picks spurts in the game. As Rick Pitino said, he just breaks your back like he did in the second half against Louisville. Just Sco something you don't normally think of a freshman being able to do. He's not a normal freshman. No, he's, not. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a normal freshman. I get a better chance of growing here than him coming back to Kentucky <laughs> next year. Down to eight on the shot clock. Walker has a look, thought about a long shot. Now he's going to penetrate, kick out Werner. Got to get rid of it. Missed it right at the buzzer. Let's the rebound and coming the other way in a hurry. Up and under. He's a big time player, Brad. I'm telling you, Bledsoe and Cousins don't get a lot of notoriety and publicity. They are not normal freshmen either. You talk about a good timeout by John Calipari. They scored eight straight since he stopped Florida's run, and now they lead by four. Biggest advantage for the Wildcats tonight, 23-19. This is only the beginning of what's going to be happening in our program with Calipari. He's the perfect hire as you watch Wall pull it up, shooting a medium-range jumper. Yeah. And then Mr. Bledsoe says, how's this for a change of direction? What about a little reverse? What about me putting it on the glass? I'll make Mr. Nestler like me. And yeah, those last two shots give Kentucky the lead they have of four with 7.19 to go in the first half. Hey, I want to say congratulations, you and your buddy. I thought did a terrific job this year in football. Todd, I really do. I, I enjoyed you guys a lot. You know, Todd Blackledge, when he gets done with football, he goes right into basketball coaching. So oh, that's, does, that's his coach? deal now, yeah. Oh, yeah but he doesn't stay to football. His team is 7-0, as wow, a matter of fact. Wow, 7-0. He must have a, all players. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably trying to teach them a split team. <laughs> Let's check in with Aaron. Guys, it was a pretty cool moment today at practice. John Calipari came over to me and said, hey, look, who called me? Right on his phone, John Wooden. Yes, he actually got in touch with the head, or the former head coach, Hall of Famer, because he wanted to just get some advice. He feels like this team just wants to be too perfect. You guys mentioned only two teams left in college basketball that are undefeated. How do you get him to play loose? How do you get him to play free? Coach Cal said, he had a great conversation with Woodson today. He said he just, you know, gave him some advice. He didn't want to share it. But he said the fact that Coach Wooden would just take the time and give him the advice, he said it was just amazing. He met him once, but he never talked to him on the phone like that. He was like a kid in a candy store, yeah. Dickie V. Wow, I would be too. Wall on the other end, missed the jumper. Billy Donovan, by the way, will get the John Wooden Legends and Coaching Award coming up in May. We'll have an update about Lane Kiffin. Yes, indeed, it's true, folks. He's apparently heading back out of the SEC to the Pac-10. Whether you use AT. 
All right, and reportedly Monty, his dad, you see there, is going with him, as is well, Ed Argerot. And so when Peter Carroll said, I didn't go for the money. Why did he give back some of that $35 million? <laughs> <laughs> that 30 plus million. I mean, he'll do, you know, great personality. I thought he really fit the college scene to perfection. I don't know about the NFL. Yeah, we'll find out. He's had a couple other shots at it with the Jets and the Patriots. Meaning in his past. Well, he made the playoffs, but not like the kind of success he put up at USC, that's for sure. Irving Walker puts the brakes on. Florida's got to find a scorer right now. Hey, one thing, Kentucky very aggressive defensively, and that's been the toughest part for John Calipari to convey to his people about playing each possession. Walker just put up a prayer and hoped somebody would help him out. And Come now the 233s get tangled up. Calipari wanted a carry. It's motioning. He's looking at Orton. Daniel Orton picks up the foul. He's another freshman, gives him great size. He was recruited by Billy Gillespie. I don't know about you, but I just never felt that Billy Gillespie felt comfortable in Lexington. I'm not sure Lexington is comfortable with Billy Gillespie either. <laughs> I guess when you go to the NIT and you go to Kentucky, they're not going to be too comfortable. Championships is what they talk about. That's it. Walker inside, up and under. Little guy found himself an opening. Terrific one-on-one move right there. Kentucky can't be happy with that defensive effort. He just beat him a one-on-one -on -one move to the basket. Not with maybe the shortest guy in the conference going inside on you and Irvin Walker. Leads down to two. There's that two-three zone. Five and a half to play first half. See the patience, the poise that Will has. Tomorrow I'm doing a column in USA Today. I'm going to pick by different award winners. Trust me, he's going to be in there. Darius Miller. Find himself an opening for the jumper to make it a four-point game again. Miller played on the international team this summer, the gold medal. The under-19 national team, they beat Greece to win the gold. Ball knocked out of bounds. Well, Dick, you've got some award winners already, and these two guys, I'm not talking about the SEC, I'm talking about all the college hoops, right? Yeah, right now, I'm going to go tomorrow, I'll be announcing John Calipari, despite whatever happens here, I think he's done an amazing job to create such a frenzy down there in Kentucky, a new system, new players, and having them unblemished, taking everybody's best shot, and then also John Wall to me, he's been a type of dandy of the year, player of the year, almost like Durant. Could have had a chance for a three-point play, but he was fouled, and he'll go to the strike. We got a lot more awards coming out tomorrow, though, in the column. You got me in there? Hey, I'll tell you what I got to get you. You see on ESPN.com, they're taking people to impersonate me at 10 Gs they can win. Whoa. I told Dan Schumann on the year the other day, Brad <laughs> Messler, man, you're better than me. You, you get the 10 Gs, man. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I could use it. People want to enter the contest, just go to ESPN.com. You can see how you can enter. <laughs> You're going to give five people are going to win ten. That's $50,000. That's huge. I mean, I've heard you at banquets and personally, me, I get amazed. I, I said to myself, when I get done, I get paid for sounding like that. <laughs> Ty's got one of two. 25-22, just under five minutes remaining first half as Orton sits down. So right now, it's Ledsell and Wall. Two freshmen, Darius Miller. Just a sophomore, Cousins a freshman, and Patterson's an elder statesman, if you want to put it that way, as a junior on the floor for Kentucky. Wall trying to get up and under and somehow did around Parsons. Just a terrific play to get on the interior. Has great basketball instincts. He's so long and athletic. Biggest lead right now, Dick, 27-22. And this is where Florida doesn't want Kentucky to run away and hide and get a double-digit lead before halftime. Parsons clangs off the three, but Tyus is in the right spot. Taking some bad shots, shooting those threes too quickly, not really patient enough. You mentioned they hit 13 and lost to Vanderbilt. There's not a good pass against the guy that fast, but somehow Wall took his eye off the ball. Underneath, foul on Cousins. You know, even making those 13, Brad, they're shooting right now 30.2% for the year. Prior to the Vanderbilt game, they were 29%. Wednesday night hoops to the ACC doubleheader. Boston College taking on number seven, Duke. Duke trying to come back from a loss to Georgia Tech over the weekend. And North Carolina and Clemson will get together at nine. Wednesday night hoops part of conference tip-off on ESPN. You know, I'll tell you right now, I think Shire and Smith together, when you look at the entire body of work, have been the most effective.
efficient backcourt as a 10. The deepest backcourt is Villanova's. And the kid last night, Scotty Reynolds, 36. 30 in the second half, and they needed every one of them to beat a good Louisville team. Shire and Nolan Smith both played well against Georgia Tech, but Singler was almost non-existent. That he didn't help him. Two for 13, four turnovers. He's too good a player for that. Yeah. Wall had to give it up. Bledsoe does as well. Patterson for three. Big battle underneath. Couple of guys hit the deck, but Florida gets the rebound. A walker on the run. There's that quickness. And Bledsoe. Bledsoe's tough physically. Wall flies in. Offensive foul. Good call by Tony Green. Put him up in the air, got stepped in, took the charge. Patterson. That shows that elevation, though, doesn't it? Oh, he's got 43-inch vertical. Patterson's got to start stepping up. 3.41 remaining first half, Kentucky by four. Brad, good stuff in that Kentucky huddle. John Calipari telling his team, you cannot be worried about yourselves. You have to be worried about each other as a team. He said, some of you guys are worried, hey, is he going to take me out? Is he going to put me back in? Am I playing well enough? Worry about this group of players. Worry about the team. He told, as Patterson's got a steal and a stuff. Whoa, that's that a no -no. is not the way you want to come out of a timeout. Oh, that's a no-no right there for the Gators. What a breakdown. Gators lead now. 29-23. Good anticipation though by Patterson. Tyus, tough catch. Tougher shot. Button blocked it. He keeps it alive. Werner rejected again by Orton. Back-to-back -back blocks. Hey, Brad, take a look at the size they have on a front court right now. When you look at Patterson, Cousins, and Orton, I mean, that's NBA size. And John Calipari told us, this guy, these guys are bigger than my Nets teams were. They are the biggest team in college basketball, averaging a little over 6'7", but as Dick said, they got three guys out there that are 6'9 to 6'11 right now. Unbelievable the size. Very athletic, too. Button and another. Yes. That's three in one possession. That's the one thing. This going to look a little bit like Connecticut, who's led the nation nine years in a row blocking shots. Wow. From Okafor to, to B. Right now, look at this. Three in this one possession, as you said, buddy. And now just five seconds on the shot clock, too. Parsons trying to get the inbounds pass. Tyus is going to have to hurry. Got the shot away. And he got another three. The second is career. And he cuts it to three. They just got to let the clock run down for the kid. How big is that? That was huge. I believe Iverson said I designed that, baby. Uh huh. Now his own gets a little bit better bounce to it. Bledsoe penetrates and just finger rolls. Nobody picked him up. Walker's looking at Tyus as if to say, how about a little help? You know, how good is that kid? Bledsoe so strong physically, really knows how to get to the basket. He and Wall, what a combination. Bledsoe averaging over 10 points a game. In a Wall with the mascot of Kentucky is a pretty good combination. No but Bledsoe is a really <laughs> good combination. We approach two minutes. Walker takes one from way out. That's a bad shot, man. That's a bad shot. I mean, you're trying to win a game against another two team in America. You've got to really take each possession and make them count. Bledsoe gives it up to Darius Miller. We're at two minutes right now. Orton trying to go offensive after three block shots on the other end. Patterson just throws it up there, and he drew a foul. Did a great job anticipating to get him positioned to get that shot off. Alex Dyes picks up the personal. You know, talk about some of the elite players in the midseason. If I had to give some solid goal awards, James Anderson, Oklahoma State, even though they lost last night, Sherlock Callens from out of Kansas, Eddie Davis, Aaron Goody, James from out of Texas, Monroe, Georgetown, Shire, Wall. I mean, those guys have been phenomenal. Best impact, Marco Polo would be Mr. Johnson from Syracuse. This guy at the free throw line is pretty good. Patrick Patterson, a junior, first team All SEC performer on some All America lists as well in the preseason. Great team player, Patterson. He said, I'm not worried about all the notoriety publicity that Wall gets as long as we win. As long as we win. John Calipari wants him to be a little tougher. He said Trey Tompkins of Georgia shoved him around a little bit. Georgia scared Kentucky in their last outing, 76-68 over the weekend. I think Georgia's going to scare a lot of teams. I think Mark Fox is going to do a good job. Patterson. There's Patterson showing he can run the court. Very strong, very physical. Played with O.J. Mayo in high school. 
Well, the lead stretches to eight. As Dick and I said earlier, you don't want it to go to double digits before you head to the locker room. You'd rather cut into this eight-point advantage. Especially the way they started the game off, jumping up a touchdown on them. Yes. Seven-zip lead. And the crowd going nuts. From Ocala. Missed it. They have been a nightmare shooting threes all year long. Other end, Bledsoe is fouled by Walker going up with a jumper. That was a, oh, some luminaries in the crowd. Robert Kraft, the chairman and CEO of the Patriots. Rod Sargent, the chairman and CEO of Staples Incorporated. Talked to Mr. Kraft before the game. His son is here, Dan, as well. Yeah, I spoke to both, and he said he's here because he's really admirers of both Donovan and Calipari. So I got to know John a little bit when he was at Massachusetts and Billy when he was over at Providence playing for Rick Pitino. And of course, Bill Belichick and Urban Meyer are tight. So you got that connection as well as Bledsoe. Bledsoe has been the story. As much as Wall is on the cover of Sports Illustrated and gets all the fanfare, it's the other freshman out of Birmingham that's leading Kentucky in scoring, and they've got a 10-point lead. Yeah, he's done a terrific job here, especially on the road. Pointing off the rock. I know he didn't call that, but he'll take it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going to start learning a little bit more about shot selection. All they know about shot selection is how bad it's been tonight. But that last three and Tyus' previous three at least keep them in the hunt. But Bledsoe's got 15. Showed his strength right there to be able to get that shot off in traffic like he did. Bledsoe with 15 of the Wildcats, 38. You know, Florida's going to start getting, have to get wins in the SEC if they're going to start getting their resume in terms of an NCAA bid. And they'll go three years in a row without one because, really, you know, you can live so far on the win over Michigan State and Florida State. We got beat by NC State tonight. Boynton, too strong. Warner had it blocked by Patterson. Another chance. Now he'll get to earn it from the free throw line. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a special team to be able to put this club on the sideline when you look at Kentucky. Because they're starting to build momentum and starting to believe. I mean, they were on the ropes early this year with Miami of Ohio, yep. Stanford. Uh, they really, North Carolina, they had a really battle at the end. Connecticut, John Calipari said, we really got seven losses. I don't believe that, though. I don't want to hear that, and I don't believe it. I don't believe he believes it. Warner, a 69% free throw shooter. Three for three tonight for the senior out of Middletown, New Jersey. You can cut it down to seven here with 1.8. And then Florida wants to play some defense and not let Kentucky get off a good last shot. That's amazing. Florida, since 2005, have lost eight players who have left early. Next would be Memphis with seven and Carolina with seven. Here's Ramon Harris at the buzzer. Oh, oh, the back of the iron. Good first half for Kentucky to be able to be on a road, get the lead after being down by seven. And it was, as you said earlier, man, Bledsoe has been the show. He's been the man. 15 points. Four rebounds. Kentucky 12-0 this year when they're leading at the half. They're up right now 38-31 as we check in with Eric. Thanks, Brad. Eric Bledsoe been the story so far in this first half. What's working for him? Well, I'll tell you what. They're uh, they're spacing out, and he's w willing to get to that rim. He's not afraid. He'll make those free throws. He'll make those runners. He's the guy. But we're missing 10 one-footers. 10 one-footers. And I, our inside guy's got to finish. What are you telling them about that in the huddle? Please make it or dunk it. That's what I'm saying. It's really good coaching. <laughs> All right, Kyle, thanks. <laughs> well, 38-31, they've got the halftime lead. Time to join Ryan, Jay, and Steven in the studio for the UPS Halftime Report, fellas. Hi, Brad. Thank As you look in on the O-Dome in Gainesville, it's the SEC on ESPN. And it's all part of Super Tuesday presented by KFC. Part of our conference tip-off. And right now, Kentucky trying to go to 2-0 and in conference play. Florida trying to avoid an 0-2 start and trailing by 7. John Wall, one of the sensational freshmen in the country, one of the three amigos, they call themselves, with DeMarcus Cousins and Eric Bledsoe. 
the main amigo right now is Eric Bledsoe. It's not John Wall. He was sensational dick in the first half. Oh, he was absolutely great. I mean, six for seven, only turned the ball over once, made big plays in transition and in traffic. Really was so explosive, very physical. I mean, those three diaper dandies, they're really special when you talk Wall, Cousins, and certainly Bledsoe. Florida started off three for four. They started off with a 7-0 lead. They're going to have to find a way to shoot better. This thing's over. Well, you know, that comes from shot selection. They're going to do a better job of moving the basketball and get better shots. They go three for 13 shooting the trifecta. They're going to make some threes if they're going to win this game against Kentucky. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Right, I had a chance to talk to Florida assistant Larry Shiat, and he said all of Kentucky's baskets have come in transition. He said there are two Jets in the backboard are going at full speed, and our two Jets can't keep up. I asked him what has to happen early here in the second half, win the battle on the glass, and you cannot be intimidated by block shots. What they really need also is number 32, Vernon Macklin, to not get in any further foul trouble. They had the lead when he got his second foul, and things sort of fell apart because they don't have enough of an inside game, and Tyus is not an inside player, though he played there last year. That was out of position for him. So here we go in the second half. That's a great point you made right there. They don't have enough in terms of physical bodies to body up with the people like Patterson and Cousins, and that's why they need Macklin. Not that he's a great, great player, but he's a solid player to give him size. There he is. Trying a hook shot that was knocked away from him. Coming the other way is Bledsoe. The scoop shot, no good. I mean, you know there's going to be a breakout for a three, four minute spurt by Wall. So Florida's got to be very cautious in that and try to control it. Tyus goes straight up with the shot. He's been pretty good from the outside considering he hit his first two three-pointers of his career in the first half. You know, Brad, how important is the first four minutes to Florida? I mean, it is vital that they do well right out of the gate. They got it down to five a minute in. Bledsoe gave up a three. Wall will take his. Miller up and under. That's been a real nightmare for Florida. Rebounding the basketball all year. Been very inconsistent on the glass. They're only about 2.8 rebounds better than their opposition, whereas Kentucky's number one in the SEC, plus 10.6 on the glass. And that's a little deceiving when you look at Florida's numbers because they're plus against some of those cupcakes they played against earlier this year. They played in an exhibition game against Weber International. Is that Chris Weber International? <laughs> I never heard of Weber International. I'm not trying to knock him out at all, but I mean, Weber International? I think Nestler and Mike Town could hook up in the backcourt and have a chance. Boy, that is huge, Dick. Cousins, who's battled really foul trouble all year. Most halves, he's going to have two, maybe three. Well, a minute and a half into the second half, he gets his third, and it's on a cheap foul, just trying to swipe the ball away from Walker. So he sits down, the big guy. And John Calipari giving a little coaching lesson right now, talking about how valuable he is to the team. Warner pull up in the lane, got it. Nice little touch right, Warner right there. That's out of New Jersey, he was favorite musician, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, absolutely. First field goal for Warner. Not Patterson's spot for a shot, he knows it. He gives it up the wall. There's that dribble drive. Get into a gap, beat you off the bounce. Orton is going to have a chance for a three-point play, and Macklin's got more foul trouble than he had at halftime now. Here's a chance for Orton to get some playing time and really earn the plaudits of the coaches. I tell you, you know, that dribble drive becomes very effective when you got people like Derrick Rose who can beat you off the bounce yeah. at Memphis, and now John Wall. I mean, when you put the ball, I sometimes think almost any system you utilize with those guys will do well. Now you talked about John Calipari giving DeMarcus Cousins a little bit of coaching as Miller keeps it alive and got it right back to Orton. And you saw Billy Donovan talking to Macklin knowing that he needs his big guy in the lineup and he's out now with three fouls. Three opportunities again. Three opportunities. You can't win a basketball game. Very unselfish right there giving the ball up. Well, that's Kentucky by nine. As soon as Florida got it down to a handful, it goes back to nine. Hey, one thing about these Kentucky kids, they really understand about playing hard on the road and how you got to really be emotional and tense. Tony Green originally said that it was Kentucky ball. Tom Eves comes in, had a better view of it. It was tipped out of bounds, so it will be Florida basketball. Can't seem to get a rhythm right now. You look at Florida offensively. It's almost like a struggle to really get anything 
cohesive offensively. Walker had it knocked away as he tried to scoop it with five seconds on the shot clock. Hey, for young kids like the Kentucky kids, if they can leave here 17 and zip, I think psychologically that's an incredible lift. Then they go on the road, they play against Auburn on the road. Lob underneath Murphy, but Boynton got it. Tyus, at least he got the shot before the clock expired. And now uh -oh. Wall going the other way against Walker. Big battle up on the glass, and Warner wins that, and he's bringing it. You got numbers. Three on two, Boynton for three. He got it. That's a big three right there by Boynton. And out of Florida. Good friends with Wall. He tried to recruit Wall. Didn't do a good job recruiting. So he just lost out in that battle. Billy Donovan turned him loose on Wall. Oh, Bledsoe, are you kidding me? Change to the left hand. Underhands it up <laughs> off the glass. Are you serious? Bledsoe said, get me some PR, man. Boynton got his own miss. Oh. Missed it inside. And a little layup right there. Comes up empty. Kentucky four on two. Live Patterson. Great look by Bledsoe. Patterson does the finish. Kentucky, oh, and they're going to celebrate that in Lexington. They're going to have so much to be jubilant about this year. A ten point lead again. Matching the biggest of the night. Here's Murphy. Tough catch down low. Slapped away from behind. But let's see if it's a foul on Orton. It'll be his third. They challenge you, boy. They challenge you defensively with that great size. Kentucky, one of the two undefeated. Another one fell over the weekend. We'll talk more about that when we come back to Gainesville in a minute. Kentucky, you can admit, did not play. At least they don't think they played that well against Georgia over the weekend, and they only won by eight over a Georgia team that most people thought would get blown out of that game. Well, you know, they've had opportunities. They've been able to steal some wins. The Stanford game, they could have easily lost. Miami, Ohio had them down big. Carolina game, Connecticut game. But they find a way to win, and that's the ultimate bottom line to get to the winner's circle. The young kids, I think the John Calipari and his coaching staff have to be very alerted to where they don't get complacent. The foul trouble right now. Cousins has got three, and he's on the floor. Macklin's got three. He's not on the floor for Florida. And also, Daniel Orton's got three. The other big young guy, and he's not on the floor for Kentucky either. Miller, Bledsoe, wide open three. Got it. Hey, it's Bledsoe's night. He's having one of those special, special nights. He's got 20 already. His career high is 24. And he's so physical. I love his toughness. I think he'd be a heck of a football player. Well, he is the guy in the backcourt for Kentucky that Florida does not have an answer for so far. He leads him with 20, and they're up 11. Well, that's the guy of the night so far on the Super Tuesday presented by KFC, Eric Bledsoe. 20 points, and he's done a little bit of everything in a variety of ways, Dick. Man, one thing, I love his strength. I love the way he gets the rap. He really attacks the basket with those layups. And I looked at the Kentucky announcers to our right, and they just said the same thing. Bledsoe, Bledsoe, Mr. Leach and Mr. Pratt. Hey, the last team for Kentucky, they got 16 in a row. 23 in a row was Rupp's runs back there in 1966. Our buddy played on that team, Larry, Larry Conley, Conley Pat, right. Riley, Pat Riley, who had the real thrill to go to the Hall of Fame with Mr. Riley. Murphy underneath, got rid of it to Warner. Walker from the free throw line. Not this time, Cousins will clear it off. Shooting the basketball really been tough for Florida. Now a nice pass again to Patterson, but he stuck it in the rim that's and the, the backboard. That's the element that's really, really impressed me with young players. Passing the basketball, looking for one another, sharing it. And that's what a team is all about. Now wall number two in the country. Number one in the SEC in assists. That one won't go up as an assist, but he might get another chance. Bledsoe's going to inbound it to him. And then right on the blackboard, the number one goal was we must be brothers. Play together. Fight together. Scrap together. John Calipari told Dick, I gave him a little of that Italian stuff. I said, La Familia. <laughs> they didn't understand what he's talking about. He said, Coach, don't let that Paisan stuff on us. 13-point lead, biggest of the night now. 
They started off sluggish like they did against Indiana. And Florida's been unable to find a scoring answer. Too quick. Let's go. Nice speed to Cousins. He's going to be fouled by Walker. They made much more impressive tonight than when I even saw him against a good Connecticut team in Madison Square Garden. That's a sign of getting better and better. Uh, Sean Calabari told us before the game, he said, we have a long way to go. I mean, we got a long way to go, and he's really genuine about that because they do have a long way to go. Well, Marcus Cousins, we had a big second half in the win over Georgia. One of his big games against Louisville, 18 and 18. And in this game, only six so far, but again, he had a little bit of foul trouble. You know, Brad, you and I have talked about it often. I think certain coaches fit certain programs to perfection. I think Billy Donovan fits this perfect year. Jeremy Foley found a real good one for this program. Mike Krzyzewski fits Duke to perfection. Roy Williams, North Carolina. And I think John Calipari is the perfect guy for the program at Kentucky. I really think he fits that program to perfection. Well, obviously brought in some freshman sensations, and they're a big reason why they're 16 and 0 right now. There's a foul as Tyus goes up, and Miller went up with him and picks up the foul. And we talked with Coach Cal before the game, and he told Dick and I the key to tonight's game. He was going to try to find out about his bench. We got to continue to build the bench. I've got guys in it, whether it's my coaching or their thoughts. They're not playing to win when they go in that game. They're playing not to make mistakes on bench, and that can't happen. He talked with us about one of his best UMass teams. He said he played six or six, seven, seven guys, guys, and he said, know. maybe I'm playing too many guys right now. You know, a lot of coaches over the years have played seven or eight guys. Tops, Mike Krzyzewski for years. I think sometimes coaches try to keep people happy, and they force minutes on players, and they break up the rhythm of the game yeah. because they're trying to force kids to play because they don't want to face mom and dad screaming at them. <laughs> hey, you tell us he was great. Cousins just muscles his way inside, and the lead is 15 again. We give high fives to each other, cousins at war. You can see there's a little love and a special feeling. They said to go to the Poly Hole down here on campus, uh -huh. and they said everybody wants an autograph and pictures. Walker from a mile away. They needed that. They need a few more. They need a Billy Donovan trifecta when he played at Providence. Took Rick Pitino to the Final Four. Cousins battling underneath, and the foul's going to be on water. So I always thought Rick Pitino fit perfectly at Kentucky. Had he never left, I think it would be incredible the numbers they would have put up. He's told me so many times that really that was the one mistake he made in his career when he left Kentucky. I mean, think about what he had. 96, 7, and 8. They might have won three consecutive national titles. Well, John Calipari did the same kind of thing while Rick went to the Celtics. He went to the Nets. And sometimes that doesn't work out so well. Doesn't work out in football sometimes either. We'll see how Pete Carroll does. Patterson on a loose ball. Nice speed by Bledsoe. And now Patterson's starting to put some numbers together. He's got 13. And Bledsoe made the play happen again. And Mr. Calvin looking at the Saban and company. Uh, Irving Walker, you're going to get hot. And he had five threes, as Dick mentioned, against Bandy. They need a hot hand. They got to do something defensively, though. I mean, they can't trade baskets. You got to start playing on the defensive end, rebound a little bit. Parsons with the miss. Billy by Cousins. Here's Walker all the way through traffic. Try to leave it for Murphy. And it's knocked away by Bledsoe. You know, Billy Donovan told us before the game, he said, we got to rebound. We got to rebound. Let's check in with Aaron. Guys, and just being in Kentucky's shoot around today, Coach Calipari, who was very vocal, was talking about Florida having the ability to make those NBA threes. He said, guys, and he said this about four or five times, Brad, if they start making those NBA threes, thank you very much. We've had a great season. Watch out for a blocker there. <laughs> well, they have had a great season so far at the midway points. And a foul on Wall as Walker got a little bit lucky, maybe, to get to the free throw line. Well, look at Billy Donovan right here. He helped us last year raise $1.2 million, and we honored Billy and Rick Pitino for the V Foundation Art Gala. And I'm proud to say this year we're doing Tony Dungy and Tom Izzo, and tickets are going. And the following year, Brad, just got a commitment, Roy Williams and Mr. Calipari, oh. the number one and two programs in terms of wins over their careers. We're going to honor Mr. Williams and Mr. Calipari. That's good company. Yes, sir. Walker's got Florida's last seven points. Try to make it eight here from the free throw line. 
And he does. They're not going away. Gators not going away. Doubleheader in ACC action. Duke and Boston College at 7 tomorrow night. And then North Carolina, as mentioned Roy Williams against the Clemson Tigers. Battle of two top 20s. All tomorrow night. Wednesday night hoops, part of conference tip-off on ESPN. Brad Nestle, Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews. We've got 12, 50 remaining. Nine-point game. Kentucky trying to remain unbeaten. Three-pointer is short. Cousins just lays it up and in. Nobody blocks out, and Cousins has an easy one. His rebound, we joked about it. That's been a negative all year for Florida, especially in big games. There's a big moment right there. You cut it to nine, and they get an unmolested offensive rebound because no one blocks out, as you said, Coach Nestle. So now Walker not in there. He had the hot hand. Boynton's going to have to pick up the slack if it's from the outside. Maybe it's from the inside. Tyus. Score the basket. Good call by Tony Green. Had a good angle. The referee. It was a nice move by Alex Tyus, too. Kind of a long ways away from the basket on that baseline. Put it up with the left hand, but he got the gold symbol. See, now they're going to find an answer defensively. And number one, they got to really start playing the ball better, start communicating better with each other. There's no question about the goaltending. Ball's going to have a chance to go in, and certainly had an opportunity to go in. So some full-court pressure from Florida here. Andre Liggins on the floor. Played really well. He said we don't beat Georgia without him. He scored six points, but he gave us a defensive stopper. He had three steals in that game that were vital. He went nine games with a DMP. Yeah. You don't want too many DMPs. <laughs> Did not play for people out there that might not know. And a CD at the end of that. Coach's decision. Cousins. Oh. Back door cut to Patterson. Rejected by Tyus. Florida coming the other way. Boynton up in. Terrific move by Boynton. Started off the block shot by Tyus. And the Rowdy Reptiles jump up. They want something to cheer about. They say, Cats, we're going to make you earn number 17. Starts with the block from the weak side. You said they needed some defense. Tyus gave it to him with the block. And then the other way is Boynton. And Boynton finished it off offensively with the great drive. He's a special talent. You took him about diaper dandies. He's got a world of offensive ability. He's got five points in each half right now. He's got to be a little better recruiter because Mr. Wall might have been his sidekick if he was able to convince him. You know, Wall almost went to Miami. Frank Hate was in the mix, and I want to give some love out. How good Frank. are they playing right They're now? They're 15-1. and one. I know they beat a lot of cupcakes early, but they beat Wake Forest the other day. And you're 15-1 and one right now. You're doing something right. We talked about ACC doubleheaded them on that one of their six ACC teams in the top 25. Absolutely. Big East, though, from top to bottom again, Brad. I mean, West Virginia goes on the road at Notre Dame, finds out how tough it is. It is so tough from top to bottom in that conference. Well, the crowd is into it now. Let's see if Florida can stay in it. Again, a little bit of three-quarter pressure. Now, Morton backs off it. And Bledsoe and Wall will bring it up together. See, now here's where Wall usually excels. At this kind of moment, club struggling, and then he says, it's my time. He likes the big stage and the big camera. He's got it. It's Super Tuesday. Oh, Cousins with a great Are move. you kidding me? Are you serious? Did you see that agility and that mobility? And he's really not fragile. There was a little bit of hostility. Oh, with that a little hostility. Hand. Absolutely, my friend. What a big-time move. He was like a ballerina guy with his size. Quieted everybody down considerably. Murphy underneath. Tip goes to Parsons. Nobody back. Nobody back. Wall. Tyus. No foul call. Florida comes the other way. Can't believe they didn't call a foul there. Boynton. Three. That would have been big. Uh -oh. And now it's a three on two. But the ball got away from Bledsoe. Sloppy. Getting out of control. He was sloppy. Well, you talk about Wall and Bledsoe in the backcourt, and then you talk about a 6'11", 260-pound freshman that can do this. Oh, he's like a ballerina. What's he going to do with all that orange gear? I don't know. Oh, wow. Give that to charity. Starting backcourt tonight for Florida, doing their job as they did against Vandy, but it may not be enough.
kind of get some of those front court people to start contributing as well. You know, Calipari is attempting this year to become the second coach to take three different teams to the Final Four. Only one has done it. His name, Mr. Patino. Yep. Providence, Kentucky, and Louisville. Well, right now, he's one of three coaches in NCAA history to lead three teams into the top three ranking, along with Frank McGuire and Eddie Sutton. Pretty good names right there. Eddie Sutton belongs in the Hall of Fame. I can't believe he's not in. But let me just tell you this as well. What's really amazing, he's going for his fifth consecutive year of winning 30 or more games. That's, That's unbelievable. unbelievable. And he's more than halfway there already. Cousins has been big, 10 of his 13 for Kentucky in this half, and we're almost at the midway point of the half. He and Wall are great spurt players. They really put points on the board quickly. Cousins asking for it with Murphy on his hip. They're going to use right now to try to slide Wall by the foul line area. He lobs it underneath and got it to Cousins, who's fouled before the shot. And we check in with Aaron. And during that timeout, Florida head coach Billy Donovan stressing to his team, get back on defense. And also, in a way, guys, trying to convince his team, look, we're down by seven, little over ten minutes. You can win this. Just like John Calipari, you have to come together as a team and also get back on defense. They're doing a good job to keep it in single digits. There's a lob to wall. Design play, and he went flying up there with that 43-inch vertical that Dick was talking about and lays it in easily. See, that's what really separates him from a lot of guards. He has that explosive elevation. So now he's in double figures. John Wall is with 10. Very quiet 10. Bledsoe has 20. And there's a foul on Bledsoe. He's a design special situation in bounce play, just flip it up high, and there's Mr. Wall with the catch. They said they practiced that with the shoot around. So Walker to the free throw line where he's hit his two from the stripe tonight. 12 points for Irving. Irving out of New York City. Played at Christ the King in Brooklyn. Yeah, produced a lot of great players there as they do at Rice High School as well. Another Walker playing for Connecticut. Came from there. Had a great game on Saturday. Connecticut and George. Was what, a, what a performance by this kid, Austin Freeman. His second half, he was unbelievable. I thought his name was Austin Cole. <laughs> he was going absolutely bananas at 28 in the second half. And Scotty Reynolds said, hey, I can top that. And he did it against Louisville 30 in the second half. Irving Walker's got 10 of his 14 for Florida in this half. Trying to keep him in the game at the midway point. These guys beat you off the bounce and go right through the traps. Miller, kind of a lazy pass to the corner, but it got the blood shot. Toulouse's got to start elevating this game, and he's not going to get the minutes that he had earlier this year. Wall's got to give it up again. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Miller, long three. Got it. That's big for him. Should help him up psychologically as well. Only had 15 minutes in the last game. His first three of the night is 26 of the year, and it makes it a double-digit game again. Seems every time Florida makes that little run, Kentucky comes back with yeah, a big play. Exactly right. And that's a sign of a great team. Warner, pick and roll to Tyus, back to Walker. Got open for a triple and knocked down another one. Little guy certainly doing his job, Brad. He's responding. That's his third three of this half. Still a seven-point game with nine to go. They don't want to go away. Now he's shy on that bench. Coaching his heart out. Rick Pitino's son on the sideline. That's coaching right. up Florida. Do you think they talk to Mr. Pitino at all? They get so. ready for the game. Ball. His three is no good. Tyus, what a rebound. That's a big-time rebound. That's going laterally to get that rebound. Tell you what, if they hit a shot here, the lid's going to come off the old dome. They've got the fans in their corner. Walker, long ball. Got it! Oh, oh, I was ready to scream, bad shot, bad shot. He said, what about that? Kentucky's going to be in a battle here in the last eight minutes. Down to four. The wall taking charge. Miller tries to quiet the crowd, but he's short and another Tyus rebound. I tell you, Tyus doing a terrific job on the glass for them. Look at this big Got it! I get it down the court. John Calipari can't be happy there. Got to call a timeout. Poor job defensively in transition. Got a T.O., baby. A 
14 to 5 run by Florida and they cut the Wildcats once 15 point lead down to two and really the spark of it all the trifecta Walker hit two big threes in that run that three-point shot has revolutionized the game Brad it really has it changes the whole complexion guys knock that shot down gives you momentum Uncle Mo is on your side Places alive. The Rowdy Reptiles jumping with joy. 7.51 to go. An elite run. Zero run. You know it's really amazing how when you make shots, it really, really defers all the liabilities in your club. Really hides them all. We said at halftime, they're going to have to start shooting better. You said they're going to have to hit some of those threes. Well, you know what? Irving Walker. Must have been listening to Dick Vitale. He's got four in this half. Looks like they picked up their defense. Oh. Look at that play. Wall goes up, and that quiets everybody. He likes the big moment. He likes to make the big play. He's what you call a real playmaker at crunch time. He really loves the big stage. Irving Walker has matched him stride for stride. Macklin. Turns on Orton, takes him all the way, and Orton blocked another shot. I tell you, Horton's going to be a good player. Orton's going to be a good player. He right now is certainly behind the likes of Cousins and Patterson, but eventually he has good potential. 7-16 remaining in the ball game. Wall goes up high to give him a four-point lead as we go to Ryan Burr in the studio. Ryan. Now, so Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews on our Super Tuesday presented by KFC and our conference tip-off. Irving Walker has got 20 points, 16 in this half, matching, well, his career high was 22 against Vandy the other day in a loss, 95-87. They're going to need more of him before this one's over. You know, Boynton and he both had their career highs right. in that game. 28 for Boynton as well. They lose the basketball game because they got very little on the interior. Tyus doing a good job here against that size of Kentucky. Parsons has to give it up to Boynton. Seven on the shot clock. He's going to get the ball. He lays it up off the glass. He went right by his buddy, John Wall. He went right by him. Played against him in the AAU competition. John Calabria has a run model. You don't play defense. You sit next to me. Except if your name is Wall. <laughs> Two point game. Bledsoe has cooled off a little bit. Only five of his 20 this half. Miller pull up jumper just inside the three-point line and he got it to go. Yeah, Miller's starting to serve himself a little bit offensively here. Two big buckets by Miller. He's got nine points, seven of those in the second half. Parsons trying to drive, fell down, but he did get rid of the ball. Tyus outside jumper. Just inside the three-point line after hitting his first two threes of his career. That one was close. Tyus Tyus certainly has been solid. He's 17 for Alex Tyus. And very active on the glass as well. But they're going to really come up with a defensive effort here. Six minutes to go. Trying to play a little combination defense. Oh, big play by Borton. Good deflection, good steal. Lob for the tie, and knocked out of there by Wall, who went up with Tyus and went higher. Tried to make the spectacular play. That was really not available. You gotta protect the basketball. You got five minutes on the clock, you're down two. You gotta make certain. Alex Tyus telling Boynton, that's an okay thought, but the junior Tyus knows that that's not what they were looking for. Maybe they can get it on the inbounds play. Well, you might get it against Weber International, but you're not getting it against Kentucky. <laughs> Walker for the lead. Rebound off to Patterson ahead to Wall. Walker ran it down. Great defensive transition by Walker. Wall thought he had a layup. Five and a half to go. Kentucky leads Florida by two. See, they're going to have some patience. Poise, patience leads to points. And a touch foul. Bledsoe grabbed Boynton on the way by. Boy, you talk about a huge play getting back on defense. A little guy right there. Yeah, because Wall had himself a layup if he doesn't get back. Warner to inbound. Walker brings it right back out. Boynton for the lead. Clanged one, but there's the tie by Macklin. 
Eckman with the good offensive rebound after a bad shot and a bad possession. Only the third tie of the ball game at 72. Cousins, tough catch. It's going to be out of bounds to Kentucky. My friends, remember, we got the number two team in America already this year. Billy Donovan and the Gators shot Michigan State when they were number two. Can it be deja vu? Hey, to me, John Calipari coaches, plays as hard as the guys play. Yeah. And Billy lost his coat, his suit coat, a long time ago. Five minutes to go. Is this on right now? In that zone, you better find more. Cousins spins and lost the ball. Tried again to get it off a Gator. And again, he's successful. The reason I say you got to find Wall in that zone, not so much a threat from shooting over it, but if he slides in a gap, he becomes a weapon with the drive or the penetration and the pass. Right back to Patterson with a hook shot. Got it. Chance for a three-point play. Every time they need a big play, they respond. It seems like Florida's got momentum, and then all of a sudden, bam, whether it be a Bledsoe, whether it be a Cousins, or Patterson, or Wall, someone responds. Great catch right there by Patrick Patterson. Patrick is not the greatest free-throw shooter in the world. One for two tonight. He's got 15 points in the game. Everywhere they go, the Big Blue is going to take everyone's best shot. The Big Blue is going to get the Big Blue oh. no matter where they go. And Patterson missed the free throw. Except when they're home at Rupp, they'll get all the love they want. Cousins again on the baseline with those long arms at 6'11". Twice he's thrown it off a Florida player to keep the ball in Kentucky's possession. At that time, he did it off the missed free throw. So this can be a four or five point possession. It's five. Five point possession. You're right, Brad. A five point possession because of the play by Cousins to get him another possession. So now let's see if Florida's got an answer. It's Ben Walker for the most part. Up under, followed by Macklin. Still battling. Parsons underneath. He's going to the free throw line. Too easy for him. He'd rather have that 65 foot shot like he had against NC State. <laughs> Talk about dramatic. Cousins picks up his fourth foul. Now remember, we got 420 left in regulation. There's a few guys with foul trouble. Cousins has four. Orton has three. Wall has three. And on the other side, Macklin's got four for Florida. Hey, one thing that Florida's really kept himself in the game because they've done a pretty good job shooting the basketball from that free throw line. They haven't missed in the second half from the strike. Parsons will try to cap, keep that intact right here. Had a bad game against Vanderbilt after the year before. He had 27 against it. Good that charge. was his career high, as a matter of fact, a year ago. He's led them in scoring three times. Parsons, that is. Tonight, only four. But these would be two big free throws. Only got one. Now shot selection becomes so big, managing the clock, making sure the right people have the ball. He's a pretty good guy to have the ball, number 11. Kentucky by four, with four to play. Bledsoe, a three, got it. Created by Wall, his vision, his size on the perimeter allowed him to make that pass to Bledsoe. 23 for Eric Bledsoe, one off his career high that he set in his debut against Morehead State, which was a school record for a freshman in an opening game. But this is a lot bigger. The bigger marbles here on the SEC trying to go to 2-0 now. Florida turns it over. Comes with a call from the back. As a foul on Wall. The two freshmen, one to the other. And Bledsoe knocks down his third three of the ball game. The ball once again in Memphis, guys. Well, as if there wasn't enough fireworks in Memphis, there's some in Knoxville tonight, too. Lane Kiffin heads to USC. Coming up on Sports Center, Scott Van Pelt and Steve Levy will talk about that. They'll have a one-on-one -on -one with Mark McGuire. 
The Lakers pay a visit to the Spurs. That takes third <laughs> in the order oh, there. Wow. That would normally be on top of the list. Key plays in this game. It was tied at 72 just a couple of minutes ago. Patrick Patterson goes up with a hook shot. Then after missing the free throw, it's kept alive by Cousins on the baseline. Off Warner and out of bounds. And on the inbounds, Wall got it over. And the three-pointer goes for Darnell Dotson, and that's how he went from 72-72 to 80-73. to It was so quick, it was a tie ball game, and all of a sudden, that little spurt at the end. I'm talking about McGuire, I was on with Mike and Mike this morning. I mean, I'll tell about that. I've told those guys, I'm fed up talking about it. I mean, the bottom line is he cheated. He did, obvious, obviously, that unbelievable run with Sosa was not but a fraud. It was Hollywood, and I'm just fed up with it. I said, hey, I want to talk about Kentucky, Florida. This is passion and spirit. I said, my guy, Mr. Nestle, and I are going to have fun. This is fun. I'm tired of talking about those cheaters. Sosa, Bonds, McGuire, Hall of Shame. Forget Hall of Fame. I'm sure Scott Van Pelt and Mr. Levy will talk about that on Sports Center. Those are, those are the words out of a basketball Hall of Famer, folks. I'll tell one thing. I mean, really, I, I, I support him for, uh, let's talk basketball. 80-73, <laughs> I'm with you. Bledsoe had it knocked away momentarily, but Wall picks up the loose ball. They need to stop so bad. They, they, got, it. they got it. Tyus with a steal. He's played very well tonight. And they better get a score in this possession. Walker backs it out. We're at 310 now remaining. Walker's been the man with a hot hand. He goes all the way under the hoop, kicks it out. Werner, long ball. Werner's got a canoe. The reputation is a long-range shooter. Hasn't had it tonight. One field goal for Werner, and that was a two-pointer in the lane. See, right now he managed the clock, takes some time off, try and show some poise. Whoops. Ooh, oh, oh. Even down. I guess he got the dribble down before his foot landed. He'll try another three. Just hit one earlier, and now on the backside, nobody gets in Bledsoe's way, and he's got 25, a career high for the freshman. How does Bledsoe get such an easy offensive rebound? Parsons missed the three. Kids don't block out. They really don't take that really responsible action of blocking out. They all think they could just utilize their great elevation and attack the run. This is a 10-1 run right now, Richard. Yeah. And it looks like it's slipping away, the upset bid by Florida, 82-73. Still two minutes left, but they've got to get some stops and they've got to hit some shots on the other end and have to do it relatively quickly. This club is going to be tough to beat. This Kentucky team has a lot of parts to it. They can beat you in many, many ways. And we did not see the best out of number 11 here tonight. Wall had to take that shot. Now Boynton runs down and has it. Oh, by Wall. oh what timing. What elevation. John Wall, cover guy, Sports Illustrated. No jinx to him. Read that story by Grant Wall, people. You'll learn a lot about this kid. He enjoys college. He enjoys his English class. The two papers on Mr. The President Obama, Martin Luther King. Oh, you got it right here. Sports Illustrated. Oh. The wall back at the free throw line after a great defensive play on the other end. Folks are starting to head to the exits of the O'Connell Center that was packed to the rafters tonight to watch a number two team come in here. First time that Billy Donovan's going to be 0-2 in his first two SEC games since arriving here. This is the highest ranked team to come into the O'Dell since Kentucky in March of 03, and Florida lost by two in that one. Yeah, that's what Tubby Smith waved to the crowd, raised his hands after the game. There's another one, 17 and 0, put it in the bank now. This baby's history. Irving Walker took a shot from about 30 feet away, and Parsons now picks up the personal. Coming up Saturday, noon Eastern, two of the top scores in the Big East. Going head to head. Dick talked about Wesley Johnson earlier. Mountaineers and Syracuse will square off 2 o'clock. Derek Favors and Georgia Tech going to Chapel Hill. They'll take on the North Carolina Tigers. Men's college basketball presented by Five Hour Energy as part of conference tip-off on ESPN Saturday. I can't wait to get to Campbell Pavilion. I'm going to do my first woman's game, and I'm going to defer to Doris Burke, man. She better <laughs> bring all her A material. Dan Schumann and I are going to be there with the game day crew. Gina Oriyama, who 
talking about winning five national titles in 10 years. That's unbelievable. They got like 54 in a row, second longest win streak in women's basketball, and they had the first win seven. <laughs> Point. Miss Patterson the rebound with a little over a minute to go. It's a 14 to one run to close out after a 72-72 tie with about five and a half minutes, 5:14 exactly. So in the last four minutes, all Kentucky, Wall padding his stats a little bit from the free throw line, but really his defensive play was the final nail in the coffin, basically. Kentucky, Dick mentioned they're going to Auburn on Saturday, and then Arkansas at South Carolina. Vandy, that's always a huge game. Win, win. <laughs> Little tough one, maybe, South Carolina. I see wins right there. I think Vanderbilt, down at Vanderbilt, would be tough. But they play, that, that place can be real tough. Oh, home. absolutely. With the benches on the end and the whole thing, it's a little bit different. And Ogilvy and Kevin Stolens to be so underrated. They've won six in a row. Look at John Wall just taking charge. What a dream. It must be incredible for a coach to have three guys in a row that you coach. Mr. Rose, Mr. Evans, and now Mr. Wall. Now the question is, they're in a battle right now for keeping him a Brandon Knight. Also, Florida's after him. Kansas, everybody's after him. Connecticut. Wall. Takes the last shot, knocks down a three, and as I said, his stats are going to look better than really he played tonight as far as offensively, but controlling the game, his defensive stops, his ball handling, his assists, he's done it all pretty much tonight. You know what else Brandon does? His presence on the floor makes other guys so much better because they get open spaces that you normally wouldn't get because of their concentration and defense. Great effort by Kentucky to come here and win in this tough, tough environment. Cousins just waved bye-bye to the Rowdy Reptiles and Bledsoe and Wall took it into the front court where they just hold the ball in an 89-77 to win. Wildcats remain perfect. 2-0 in the conference, 17-0 overall. Coming up next sports center for more on this game you can join us on espn news shortly for a post game extra this has been a presentation of espn the worldwide leader in sports for dick vitale aaron andrews and our entire espn crew brad nessler saying so long from gainesville scott and steve with sports center standing by next